With a stroke of a pen, President Obama moved this week to shield some four million illegal immigrants from being deported. But Republicans say he's exceeded his constitutional powers and they are planning their response. Texas Senator Ted Cruz is one of the sharpest critics of the president's executive action. Senator Cruz, welcome back to Fox News Sunday. Good morning, Chris. Always good to be with you. Senator, I want to separate policy from process, what the president did from how he did it. Uh, the president says that he's using his prosecutorial discretion uh, to go after the bad guys and not to go after parents of people who are in this country legally. Here's how he explained it. Felons, not families. Criminals, not children. Gang members, not a mom who's working hard to provide for her kids. We'll prioritize, just like law enforcement does every day. Senator, what's wrong with that policy? Well, it, 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 the notion that this is just prosecutorial discretion is, is simply nonsense. Uh, the Constitution gives Congress the authority to establish our immigration laws. And what the president announced this week is a wholesale refusal to follow our immigration laws, to enforce our immigration laws. Number one, for four to five million people here illegally, he's promising to print up and give work authorizations. Essentially, he's gotten in the job of counterfeiting immigration papers because there's no legal authority to do what he's doing. He's simply giving work authorizations and claiming unilateral authority. But secondly, the memo that he put out, not the speech, but the memo that, 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 that he put out to the Department of Homeland Security says that they are not to enforce immigration laws other than for violent criminals and, and, and a few discrete categories. But for most of the 12 million people here illegally, the president is instructing the executive branch no longer enforce the immigration laws. It, it is a, a, a stunning and, 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 and sad display of, of a president declining to honor his constitutional obligation to take care that the laws be faithfully executed. Well, I want to pick up on that because we talked about the policy, but I also want to talk about the process and the fact that the president is doing this by executive action. He says that there is a long precedent for chief executives to do exactly that. Take a look. The actions I'm taking are not only lawful, they're the kinds of actions taken by every single Republican president and every single Democratic president for the past half century. Senator, Presidents Reagan and Bush 41 uh, took executive action to grant legal status to about a million and a half people who were in this country illegally. What's the difference? Uh, you know, a, a, as a matter of, of constitutional law, the claim the president just made there is, is frivolous, which I would note he acknowledged 22 times over the last five years. He said over and over again that he had no constitutional authority to do this until suddenly he decided it'd be politically beneficial to do so. The difference with Reagan and Bush is both of them were working with Congress and implementing congressional statutes. Absolutely, Congress can change the immigration laws and the president in the course of executing the immigration laws can put congressional will into effect. The difference here is, is this is not a president who wants to work with Congress, rather this is a president who is openly defying Congress and, and, you know, Chris, I, I actually can't put it any better than Saturday Night Live put it last night, where, where, where they, they reprise the old schoolhouse rock. You remember how a bill becomes a law? And, and Saturday Night Live literally had the president pushing the bill down the steps of the Capitol because we no longer need the steps in the Constitution for how we pass laws because the, the president now is claiming unilateral authority the Constitution doesn't give him. And I'll tell you the danger of that, Chris. It's, it's not just on the substance here, and the substance here is very damaging to working men and women across this country, but it's a far broader danger for anyone concerned about liberty. Because if this president can impose his own immigration laws unilaterally, then the next president can impose his own laws, whether it's immigration, whether it's tax, whether it's labor, whether it's environmental. We right. stop having a constitutional system of checks and balances that's protected our liberty, and we move just just to unilateral executive authority, Sen e essentially using the president's own word. It's the power of a monarch or an emperor. Senator, uh, the question then, of course, is how to respond. And there's quite a split 
within your party. As I understand it, what you're saying is that the Republicans should vote to fund the government in all of the departments except one, and that is that you would attach a rider, an amendment, uh, to funding for the Department of Homeland Security, which handles immigration, taking back or uh, rescinding his executive action. Uh, and that your thought is that if he vetoes that, then he's responsible for shutting down the department. The problem is that's almost exactly what you did with the government shutdown across the entire government in October of 2013 in Obamacare, and it backfired badly on your party. Well, Chris, look, I, I, I'm going to suggest a very simple proposition. All across this country, Republicans campaigned saying, if you elect a Republican Senate, we will stop President Obama's illegal amnesty. My very simple suggestion to my colleagues and friends in the Republican Party is we need to honor what we said. We need to actually do what we said two weeks ago on the campaign trail. So, so would now, you, I've laid would out you, a is detailed, that what, what you would do, plan. It, sir, because we have limited time, is that what you're saying you would do, that you would attach a rider to funding for just the one Department of Homeland Security? Chris, I've laid out a detailed systematic plan for what Congress should do. We should use the constitutional checks and balances we have to rein in the abuse of power of the executive. Step number one that I've called for is the incoming majority leader should announce that if the president implements this lawless amnesty, that the Senate will not confirm any executive or judicial nominees other than vital national security positions for the next two years, unless and until the president ends this lawless well, let me, amnesty. Sir, let me pick that you up. That is an explicit let me pick, authority given to let the me Senate. Pick, if I may, let me pick yeah. up right on that, because are you saying sure. that the Senate should refuse to confirm Loretta Lynch, the president's new nominee for attorney general, and thereby leave Eric Holder, who you don't like very much, in that position even longer? Chris, what I'm saying is we should use the constitutional checks and balances we have to rein in the executive. You know, if you read the Federalist Papers, the Federalist Papers, our framers talked about a president that would behave like a monarch, that would rule by diktat and decree I, rather than follow the Sir, I understand that. I'm asking a direct That's question, though. Would you, would you block Loretta Lynch's confirmation as attorney general and leave Eric Holder in the job? In my view, the majority leader should decline to bring to the floor of the Senate any nomination other than vital national security positions. Now, now that is a serious and major step. It, it is a power the majority leader has, and nobody else has any ability to alter. If the majority leader announced that, it would impose real consequences on the president and the administration. All right. I, and then the second big check we've got, the second constitutional power we've got, is the power of the purse, and we should fund one at a time the critical priorities of the federal government but also use the power of the purse to attach riders we've got to demonstrate that the campaign words republican used on the trail were more than just talk that we're willing to honor our commitments but you're willing to shut down departments and you're willing to take the backlash i mean it didn't work very well with obamacare sir Well, let, let me point out, you, you know, at the time, uh, you and a lot of folks in the press said what a disaster it was to stand up and fight on Obamacare, that it was going to cost Republicans the majority, it was going to cost seats. Let me point out, we just had an historic election where we won. It's going to end up being nine seats in the Senate. We retired Harry Reid. We've got the biggest majority in the House since, since the 1920s. And the number one issue that candidates campaigned on across the country was Obamacare. Now, listen, it was a mistake for President Obama and Harry Reid to force a government shutdown, but it was not a mistake for Republicans to stand up and fight on Obamacare. And not only did the disaster that, that, that a lot of folks predicted not happen, it was the biggest victory we've had in a long time. Republicans Sen need to actually do what we say we will do and, and not just have a lot of empty smoke. Senator Cruz, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure to talk with you, sir. Always good to be with you, Chris.